annexation of the enclave study area A. Um, before you op before we open the agenda, we need to bring um, begin with an overview of the new state law and statistical information of area A, and that would be um, a brief introduction of all the departments that would provide services for this area. You know, Hunter's Fire Department uh, has done an analysis of A, B, C, and D areas. Uh, we feel like that from a you know from a service delivery standpoint, and also from an ISO standpoint. So these four annexations can take place uh, without any, any kind of fear that your ISO rating is going to be lowered. Now we will lose some points uh, in the process of taking in areas. Uh, you know, your, your point total is determined on a lot of things and one of them is the areas you cover that are more than a mile and a half away from the fire station. So we feel like the police department currently gives uh, exceptional customer service uh, in the area of response to our citizens and our response times. Uh, we believe that uh, less than a thousand people uh, could be equated to adding a thousand people to a new to a new residential subdivision within the city, and we would feel comfortable that we could manage that uh, enclave uh, and continue to give exceptional customer service without uh, without uh, or with very little impact on our call for service. We've been doing our research. Uh, there are 16 businesses that lie in this area with uh, 19 containers. Uh, we're geared up and good to go for that. Uh, we could start the caps, uh, leaf and mulch, and earth angel. Whenever we're told that uh, you know we've taken this area in, now the one exception that will be needed will be have to negotiate with the uh, county's contractor as far as residential pickup. We're not geared up for that just yet. It'll take us a while to get the containers in and to get our routes set up. But uh, the rest of it, we're good to go. And excited about adding recycling. To be honest with you. All of the viewpoints associated with this issue, and each individual will have three minutes to speak. If previous speakers have addressed the same issue that you wish to address, please allow the next speaker to come forward. In the event that there are any questions raised by a speaker, we will write those down and hold the responses until the conclusion of the public hearing. In addition, we will maintain the sign-up sheet and continue the public hearing at the November 3rd Board of Directors meeting. So tonight is not the only time for the public hearing. We will continue it. Uh, this should afford those who were not able to attend tonight an opportunity to speak on November the 3rd. Also, as a reminder to the board members, this is a public hearing and not a discussion of the board, okay? <laughs> and should an ordinance be forthcoming at a later date, we will have sufficient time for discussion. Good evening, my name is Mary Warnable. I'm just for the Peace District 4. I reside at 113 Foxwood Street in City District 4. Um, I want to first recognize your authority in doing the, the annexation uh, process. Um, I understand that it's, it's perfectly within your authority to do so, and I personally don't have a lot of objections as to um, voluntary annexation. Um, I do believe that there are a lot of, of benefits in making this annexation move. But I'd like to bring your attention to a meeting that the city and county uh, conducted with the planning commission a little over a year ago. Um, uh, it was before some of you were sitting on the board. Uh, Director Pat McCabe and Karen Garcia were board in attendance. And during that meeting, we had discussed these enclaves. And we had talked about um, prior attempts at annexation where we had voted and they failed to go through and that kind of thing. And we also discussed um, the pros and cons of involuntary annexation versus voluntary annexation. And we, we all kind of agreed at that meeting that the preferred way would be voluntary annexation and not use a heavy-handed uh, uh, ordinance to involuntarily annex these, these uh, families from these enclaves. So what I would like to, to respectfully ask is that we reverse um, our method and choose not to do this action in this, in this manner and in fact um, go out the way we had discussed, go door to door if we have to, um, and, and convince the residents that you would like to annex in as to why it would be to their benefit and do it as a voluntary basis. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank 
got to skip Houston, uh, live at 155, five points circle. And my comments, I want to touch on three points. Number one, you may, you may have a legal right, but I don't think you have a moral right to annex us without representation. Annexation without representation, or in other words, not letting those affected have a vote on this issue is not acceptable. It is not in keeping with the basic principles that this country was founded on. The legislature, through a poorly conceived law, has given you the power to club us over the head and drag us into your city by force. But how is that fair? Would fairness dictate letting the people vote on this very important issue? I understand, of course, that you don't want to go that route because you know that the majority of us don't want to be annexed. Everybody here tonight, except perhaps one or two people, has appeared to speak out against this. Every time you've had us vote on it, we turned you down by big margins. In 1998, we won with about 63% of the vote, including the voters in the city. But now you have this power to accomplish your objectives without having to persuade anyone, just use brute force. <coughs> Frankly, this heavy-handed approach reminds me a little bit of a suitor who, having been spurned repeatedly by his love interest, finally just uses force to take what he wants. Is that now the hot springs way? Second, increasing the area and the number of people, and I've heard by possibly as many as 10 to 15% with all the uh, enclaves, Increasing the area and number of people will increase the cost. There's no assurance the city can properly service that area and population increase. You're not getting very many businesses. This is mostly residential. This first area, I only know of one or two businesses in it. You're reducing at least temporarily, until rates are adjusted or whatever, the water and sewer revenue. Is there a plan to set up a millage property tax, which can be done without a vote of the people to raise money for services eventually? That idea has been floated. Maybe not seriously discussed here, but it's been floated around town. I dare say I could go down any number of streets in Hot Springs and find people who are not receiving full and adequate city services now, and yet you want to expand. And finally, I would suggest that you really don't want us in your city, taking in several thousand people, most of whom don't want to be a part of your city, and many of whom will adamantly oppose you at every political turn in election wouldn't seem to me to be a wise way to build a strong, cohesive city. I'm sure you feel that once we experience firsthand all the benefits of being a citizen of Hot Springs, it will enthusiastically change our minds. I sure wouldn't bet on that happening. I appreciate your time, but please leave us alone. Okay, I first off want to thank you for having a public hearing on this and for having another one on November 5th. I signed up against this, but I could be for it, which is up to you. I can be your worst enemy have been, or I can be your best friend, and which is up to you. As some of you know, the national press and media call me Bill Clinton's arch enemy and nemesis. So if I will take on Bill Clinton, I will take on Hot Springs. In fact, I have. In 1998, three weeks before the election, I organized a countywide opposition to annexation. And we beat the hell out of that annexation effort, 63% to 37%. So, again, which approach, who I am, is up to you. Do we continue this war? Do I referendum you to death on these annexation efforts and on other important hot springs business, which I am fully capable of doing? Do I organize the county voters? Do I organize the volunteer fire departments as I did last time and make war on the Hot Springs as you are making war on the county with this effort to force annexation? I attended the annexation meeting that Mary Barnville talked about a year ago. What has changed? At that time, the fire department chief, the police department said we cannot service one of these enclaves. Okay. Now, I want to switch to the positive. We can make peace. We can change our attitude. Hi, this is Carrie Bars with Arkansas Spectrum, and we're downtown Hot Springs, and um, we've just been into the meeting at the city, and I'd like to take a chance to introduce you to Mary Proct. And who are you here representing? I'm here as a member of the Lake Hamilton Fire and Rescue Board of Directors. Um, what is your stance on what is happening right now with the annex? Well, Lake Hamilton's main concern is uh, with the, if the annexation goes through, is 
loss of potential revenue from membership that we receive. Yes. Uh, we could lose possibly 10% of our membership with the Enclave A study and possibly up to over $120,000 if Enclave B goes through. But tonight it's just the Enclave A is what yes, they're talking tonight about tonight. it's just the A. Uh, that's our main concern. Uh, we have an obligation to, to serve, uh, which we will do, but our our main concern is loss of revenue for our member from our members. Well, if the if it does go through, the annex does go through, and you lose that revenue, but you're still saying that you're going to still service those. Correct. How will you do that? We just do it the best we can. Our fire station number one is in the study A uh, on Birchwood Bay Drive. Uh, that's why we were here tonight because of that. Uh, it will still be our fire station one. Uh, and we will service that area. That's what our fire departments do. Well, with that being said, will you be here in the November meeting? I might be, or another representative of the board definitely probably will be here. And that was November the 5th? Uh, the 3rd, I believe. November, November the, 3rd. the 3rd. Yes. And the next city meeting. Right. Um, thank you so much. No we appreciate problem. your interview. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm with Jill Blanchard. And uh, she made a uh, very important um, point a few minutes ago, and I wanted to see if she'd give us a heads up on what she's talking about with her animals. Well, I have animals. I've got three dogs. We have two acres. And if I choose to, I can let them out. I don't. We have our, our yard is fenced in. They're contained. But if I want to let them out, I can. You know, they're vaccinated. They've got... They've got everything that they need to have. Mm -hmm. If I wanted a laying hen in a rooster, I could <laughs> I have. It. I could have it. Right. But if they annex me in, that means I can't have it. So when you chose your property to live there, I wanted to be that property out of the city limits. So it you was, could have your animals. And it was big enough for everything that I wanted. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to visit You're with us. Ron, yes. thank you for taking time to visit with us. Um, you were in there and you talked in front of the board. What are some of the highlights of maybe uh, what you talked about in there? I'd say the most important point I had was that if we force the people to get annexation, I actually live in the city. I don't live in the proposed annex area. But if, if it's such a good deal, we should be able to convince the people to want to be part of the city. By forcing businesses and individuals to come into the city where they chose property that was was clearly outside of the city lines, I think we're doing it the wrong direction. And I suspect that that resentment is going to stay with them for a long time. And it's long term not going to be a good deal for, for them or the city just because it was something that they didn't want. Do you think your point was heard? I think it was heard. I suspect, though, in these situations, they've had so much buildup in order to come to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the opinions are, have been made because they've been thinking about this for a while. Are you going to be back in November? Um, I don't know if I'll be back in November, but I think what I'll do next is I think I'll, I'll write a letter to the editor that oh, has my points. That's great. Right. Thanks for taking right. time with us. Appreciate it, Ron. Okay, thank you. Okay.